So we talked about how sometimes people have no idea what you're talking about when you start to tell them about the different things that you have gone through and why you felt to give them another chance. Again, my pronoun is him. Um, or anybody in your life. It doesn't have to be a relationship. When somebody's never been in a relationship like this of narcissistic abuse, they have no idea these kinds of people exist and good for them I'm trying to educate so that people are aware and then they they see it coming and then they don't encounter this when you do start to confide in someone to the point that you're comfortable and to the point that you even maybe you now separate and you're starting to take some time it's funny because I think about the question why did you break up people inevitably ask each other that if you were in a relationship and then you're not that's eventually the question they're gonna get why did you break up well in your head you probably have incidents 1 through 20 so it's like you say to yourself okay do I just do I say incident 20 I mean you don't feel like sitting there and going through everything so what's the short answer right none of the incidents are why you broke up even though any one of the incidents would have broken up again we go with the word normal but a healthy functioning couple so you really, it, as hard as you're trying, you don't want to get allowed with every single detail. I get that. And I, I probably advise you not to either until you're in a fully ready position to do that, if ever. I've never really discussed details because I don't think they matter. I don't think they matter. Everyone has a different barometer. Whatever your line in the sand is, if you keep redrawing your line in the sand, then you're way beyond anything that you would have accepted. And that's what the point is. So it's not the acts or the details. That's why I say they don't matter. They matter to you, and they matter. But I'm saying if the infraction caused you to move your line in the sand, then it's big enough, in my opinion. So I think about the incidents 1 through 20, and I think it's probably easier to say to somebody who's never been through it, look, and we talked about this a little bit last time, there was a lot that happened that I didn't see or that I chose not to see. It's a very long story. Let's just say I finally saw the light and I got out. That's what I always, because that's exactly what happened. I saw the light and got out. And mine was short, under a year. But some of these women are affected for decades. So they can't just, why do you even talk to them again? Why did you go back to them? And da -ba 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 -ba. I mean, I get all that. And when you think about a question to someone that's, just left a narcissistic abusive relationship rather than um, why did you break up a more appropriate question would be um, not the really long ones with families and children that could be real deep and they just they're in they're they're engulfed in that but in a newer thing like rather than why are you no longer seeing each other it's well why did you not break up on the second date or the seventh date or in the fifth week you started to see the red flags and you stomped on them you ignored them and you wanted to take care of this person and show them the light and that's a beautiful sentiment but then it didn't work out and then you went through this whole trauma bonding thing with him and you'd fight and then you'd get back and and you didn't drag your friends through this and now they don't understand how any of it was going on and that you made it with this person what they caused a chemical reaction in your brain there's all this science during the love bombing phase and you are addicted to that and you're coming down off of it so you're fighting, they call it an addiction. You're coming off of it, you're in withdrawal from that person, and you may have weak moments where you wanna to talk to them, or you wanna see them, or you miss them, and your confidant won't understand that either. But I continue to encourage you to seek as much support as you can to keep yourself on the straight and arrow. If you don't beat yourself up. There's a million videos on no contact, no contact, never talk to them again. Don't beat yourself up. It's like a diet. If you have potato chips, so the next day you get back on it. 
but don't beat yourself up but be honest and open about what's happening because if you the minute that you are not honest or open about what's happening you know that you don't like what's happening so if you're letting him creep back in and you don't want to tell your friend because now they really don't understand because now you told them the, some of the big things maybe you told them incident number 16 and incident number 19 and they're like <gasps> and you're thinking oh my god please um, you don't even know about 8 and 11 or whatever but when you have that in your mind and now you're teetering on coming off of this addiction it can it can really um, test you it can test your wherewithal to stay on the path that you know is right for yourself so lean on your friends but understand if they don't understand what's going on. They've never been in this situation. They don't know people like this exist. They don't understand that there was um, an entire cycle in which you found yourself that kind of locked you in. So just be patient with people that you turn to and please people that we turn to or they turn to or whoever. Everybody just try to just, just love, no judgment and just accept that they've been through something and they're trying their best. That's how I kind of try to see it.